welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira. Guys, I hope you're having an awesome day. I hope you're having fun. My day went from sweet to sour and back to sweet. And the reason it's back to sweet is because I am podcasting with the one and only Tiffany Trader. Tiff, how are you today? Oh, I'm so good. I love podcasting with you. You just fill my soul up and you always make me feel like the most important person in the room. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you are. And I'm glad that you feel that way. Guys, if you don't know, Tiff and I go way, way, way back. If you're new to the podcast, Tiff has been here since pretty much inception of Dental A-Team. She was here when Dental A-Team was Kira's Dental Consulting. And I paid her (laughs) via Venmo, but Venmo cuts you off at a certain amount. And I had to text her sometimes and say, sorry, I've reached my limit. I'll have to pay you in a couple of weeks when it comes back on. How freaking sketch is that? And Tiff is still here, guys. So Tiff, (laughs) I'm glad you hung through all those weird days. (laughs) Clearly, you're doing something right. <laughs> I think, I'm still here. I think it just goes to show you don't have to have everything perfect to start a practice or to start something because honest to goodness, guys, Tiff will, will literally back me on this. I literally paid her off of Venmo. And then I thought I'd get yep. smart and I opened Jason's Venmo and started using Jason's Venmo to pay so I'd have more money. And then I actually got flagged for having two Venmo accounts and shut Jason out of Venmo, my husband, for about four years. And he was pretty angry at me. But, you know, a long time. <laughs> he was like, Kira, you flagged my Venmo account. And I'm like, well, I, I couldn't send checks. Checks were getting lost in the mail. They were never making mm-hmm. it. We're doing Venmo. I honestly don't know, Tiff why you stuck around or why you thought this wasn't the most shady business. But guys, if there's a will, there's a way. And if you're just like extra savvy and a ton of fun, people will stick with you. So there you go. I agree. And I think this actually ties really well and really fun into, I think sometimes just communicating is what can help out. I, I was upfront with Tiff. I remember when we met for the first time. It was adorable. I found like the first picture of our meeting off of an Instagram account. And Mm -hmm. I think it was just like true communication. Like this is where we are. This is who we are. Didn't try to sugarcoat it. Didn't try to make it better than we were. And I think that ties into offices of that communication between front and back office. And I feel in so many practices, there's a divide when there doesn't need to be a divide. And I see it in practices. I hear it in practices. And the number one thing for me, at least, and Tiff, I'd love your input, the number one thing when I'm in a practice that people say they want help improving is always communication. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. Communication and systems, which I think tie hand in hand. For sure. So Tiff, talking Mm -hmm. through, I said I was up front. That's why you stuck with me forever. And that helped our, that was the like trying to segue into the topic. It could have been good. It could have been a bust, but let's dive into this communication between front and back office and what you see are like some of the hurdles plus some of the ways to overcome those so people can really dive into like, how can we get our front and back office to communicate and be on the same page? Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I think that, I think we do a lot of things um, revolving around communication. I think we do a lot of things really well. Um, There's so many podcasts here that will help this communication piece for you guys. And number one, I want to say that I recognize, I hear, I understand, and I value the divide that can happen in some practices between the front office and the back office. And I think that it's important to acknowledge that because they are two different worlds. Like you guys are living in two separate pieces of a world, trying to do the same thing, provide this Excel patient experience for the same person. So you're having these touch points with this one person from two very separate places like in in your world in your dental practice and so i want just want to acknowledge that first of all and if you are experiencing that in your practice you are not alone you are not the only ones i have lived through it kira's lived through it there are practices all over the place 
that are living through it right here and right now. So you are not alone whatsoever. And this so, is why Tiffany has a raving following of clients who just love her. <laughs> because Tiffany, I think that that is something that is one of your strongest uh, attributes is that you understand it and you validate and you don't just wash it under the rug and say, guys, you're being ridiculous. No, you shouldn't feel this way. Or this is just a absurd. There's no way you guys can't be on the same page or in the same practice. I think people could get a lot more done in their offices if they would manage and talk and communicate very similar. So guys, I hope you just heard Thank that. You. you listen to that and you see that because truthfully, I think that that's why you have such success with practices because you don't dismiss it. It really is an issue. It is there. Like you said, they are in two different worlds. It's like speaking, I don't know, Chinese and, and Japanese or Chinese and English. I honestly would have no clue what they're saying. I couldn't even read that. Like those look like lines to me, which I'm sure our writing looks like lines to them as well. But like being able to communicate in the same language on the same page when living in two different worlds is a hurdle that should be acknowledged and then giving some ideas of how to overcome that. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's important. I think that's number one. Um, that, I think that's the number one way to communicate with someone is to ensure that you're always validating them. The feeling of being invalidated is demeaning as a human being. It literally makes you feel smaller than the person you're speaking to, and it makes you feel like they're trying to make you small. So immediately we get defensive. And in invalidation comes in spaces of um, not listening to someone. So maybe listening to someone to answer or respond rather than listening to them to hear, or trying to provide solutions uh, when someone's not actually looking for a solution. So maybe asking, are you looking for a solution? Do you want help solving this? Or do you, are you just like needing to speak it out is always a great way to do that. Invalidation comes from uh, discrediting their opinion, right? I think we see this in the entire country, not just dental practices, but discrediting someone's opinion and making them feel like the way that they're, they're feeling in that moment or the words that they're saying are incorrect. And there's nothing incorrect or wrong um, it's just not the same as yours. So hear it, validate it. I hear you. I valid. That's that's a valid point. The way I see it is, and then give your point. So I think number one, we want to always make sure that we're validating, that we're listening to hear, um, and that we're truly using words to communicate, and that our words match what we're trying to say, or what we are wanting to say. So. What I mean by that is if the words that you're using to communicate, the words coming out of your mouth are different than what you're actually feeling, the words are going to come out different than what you're intending. Your tone will match your emotions, not your words, if that can make sense. Your words coming out need to match the emotions that you're feeling. So if you're not feeling good, like Kira, I think mentioned at the beginning of this, right? She went from great, super happy to, you know, down in the dumps to super happy. Like if she had tried to come in when she was down in the dumps and been like, okay, guys, this is a fantastic meeting. We're all going to kill it. Everybody would be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, What's going on? It feels so wrong because it doesn't match. So you need to validate. You need to listen to hear. Um, not to respond. And then you need to speak with true intention. You need to speak from where, where you're at. And if you're not at a place where you can speak on it, maybe let the person know like, Hey, give me just a second. I'm going to get my thoughts together first. That's fine. So those are like, holy cow, super in-depth communication tools, very skimmed over very fast. If you want more information, always reach out to us. Those are key tips in any life situation or circumstance to communicate. But for front office, back office, one really, really simple tool to enhance the communication between your front office and your back office is handoffs, you guys. Just force some sort of communication. More often than not, the communication barrier and that like front office, back office divide happens because we're simply not together. We're not with them. When I'm sitting up front and I'm treatment coordinator or I'm sitting in the back and I'm dental assistant, I am with those people all day. I'm with the billing representative and the check-in and the checkout when I'm TC. I'm with the other dental assistants and the hygienist when I'm a dental assistant in the back office. We are literally sitting with these people all day. So of course it's going to build a core group of 
individuals that we're talking to because we're with them all day. So in order to change that, you've got to force the communication between these two groups of people. And if you're not having handoffs or good handoffs or communication between them, even with the patient present, then there's not there's zero communication that makes it difficult. So the easiest way to ramp up communication in office between the front office, back office, and to fix that divide is to ensure that you guys are doing handoffs. We love NDTR, next visit, date, time, recare. Google on our, you can Google search um, our podcast and look for that one. There's a ton of NDTR. You can go to our website, go to podcasts, and there's a little search bar there. Look up the NDTR. Email us if you want more information as well. But NDTR, some sort of handoff, giving that information and including the patient in that handoff will ramp up the affinity levels. So the, the happiness, the likeness level between the patient and the team members. And it automatically raises the affinity, the likeness or loveness between those two team members as well. So yes, there's the super deep <laughs> validate here, right? Listen to hear, and then always speak with true intention. But the super tangible, easy way to ramp up communication is going to be with your, your handoffs, making sure that that there's just a ton of communication in there. What, what did you do today? What needs to happen for the patient to come back? How was the patient? Did they go on vacation? Like transfer some of that information and let the other person feel included in your world. Are you guys sick of trying to figure it out on your own? I know I am. When I'm trying to run a business, sometimes I just think like, there's got to be a better way to do this. And so for me, my answer has been to find someone who's done it and does it really, really, really well. Like I'm talking the best of the best of the best. I want someone who's been in my shoes, somebody who understands what I'm going through. When I was looking for the consulting business, I found a coach who literally has run a consulting business. Well, that seems like the perfect fit. So you guys, right now, we have a few spaces open in our platinum consulting. That is in the consulting where we actually come to your practice. We help you get systems implemented. We don't just tell you what systems to implement. We actually implement them with you and for you. you. Guys, it is one of the best investments I've ever made is to hire a coach who understands the business I'm in, who's lived it, who's done it. And that's what we in the Dentally team do. We literally physically fly to you. So if you're sick of trying to figure it out on your own, if you just want somebody who understands you, join our platinum. I'd love to have you. I'd love to have our consulting team come out and see you. Be in your office, be with your team, and truly help you get onto the easy path of dentistry. It doesn't have to be hard. So join us in the Platinum. We'd love to have you. Tiff, I love all those pieces you just listed off because I think you went really dental A-team style here of life and life skills and how you communicate better mixed with a tangible of how to actually do it. And I think that that's something I love about how we consult, how we work with our offices is it's really about growing you guys as people. And it's also giving you the tangibles of how to execute on it. Uh, I think so often those handoffs just feel silly. I'm like, guys, honestly, if you were to just do three things and do them really, 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 really well, it'd be patient experience, morning huddle, and handoffs. Like if you guys could just kill that, crush that, like forget everything else. Like, yes, we should look at production. Yes, we should have great things. Like if you could just knock those three things out of the park and role play those every single like quarter. So it's this month, we're going to knock out our morning huddles and have those really freaking great. The next month, we're going to do our new patient experience and just hone in and laser focus and make sure it is perfect every single time. And the third one is we're going to crush our handoffs and we're going to role play these every single morning huddle with a route slip, with a perfect handoff, with different scenarios. Your practice would, would like shout volumes because I think so often people don't practice handoffs. They just assume and expect that every person is going to do it amazing. And then information's dropped, then tension's created. Then people say, oh my gosh, people just can't do it. We might have team members that don't have it, but I'm like, practice makes permanent. So practice the perfect way you want it done over and 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 over again. And really start to see that commu communication ramp up. People might say, oh, that's so annoying. I don't want to do that. And I ask, what's five minutes every day that you're at the practice for 30 days. I mean, that's not that much time. That's actually 150 minutes because five times 30 is 150. You divide, that's like just over two hours in a month that you role play this every single day and you don't even work 30 days. So you're fine. Like it'd be two months. So that's like 
an hour and five minutes every month, maybe 10. I didn't do my math perfect. But if you could just dedicate that time to practicing handoffs, the communication and the time you spend with upset team members that aren't on the same page and the frustration and the back and forth and the missed lab cases and the missed appointments and the wrong scheduled and the patients canceling because they didn't know their copay or how much they were going to owe. That's not that much time to practice these handoffs and to get that communication dialed in that I think, I don't know, Tiff, you could, you could definitely chime in on this. I personally think if you guys would practice these handoffs and get them really good and practice perfect handoffs, not just crummy handoffs, not like Mm -hmm. haphazard, but make every person do perfect handoffs the communication and the frustration I think would drop exponentially just by practicing that one thing consistently. Yep. I totally agree. I just think that it's um, like you said, practice makes permanent, making sure that it happens every time and literally just forcing that communication between two people. I know for me personally, I can tell when communication is lacking, right? Or when there's like a distance and especially when you're in office with people And when I was in office, I would just like, I would feel it. And then I'd just go talk to the person. (laughs) I'd be like, you know what? I haven't really chatted with you a lot lately. You haven't had a lot of patients come through. Or my third assistants, right, who are like sterile tech and and kind of that catch-all. They don't have a lot of interaction with the front office because they don't have handoffs always. So just getting up and mingling, mix and mingling, and just ramping up that communication. And if you guys are doing it, like Kara said, focused around that patient experience, you're doing it for the right reasons. And that's what is important. That's why you're there. You guys are not there. This is like hardcore mama truth here, but like you're not there to be best friends. You are, it's fantastic. And I love when I see teams that are friends and you guys can hang out on the weekends and you can do all the fun things, but you're not at work to create that you're there to create a patient experience and when your focus can be on that i promise you those other pieces they fall in place thereafter and mic dropped by the one and only tiffany trader <laughs> like guys i agree and i think so often we don't realize that we don't focus on that and it's we think that the job is there to make our lives happier when in reality we're there to have the great patient experience so let's level up let's rise up Let's fix that communication front and back. Let's let's commit to having that, like you said, listen and validate our team members and then really practice these handoffs and make a patient experience amazing. I promise you, Disneyland, those amazing companies that you see, they're the ones who are actually working hard that are making things, they're practicing these things, they're having great experiences and they're focused not on the friendships. Those are the secondary. The first thing is let's make sure these clients, these patients, these people are having the best experience because we know that that's what we're here for and that's what we're providing. So Tiff, I love it. I think you are one of the most masterful communicators. So guys, if you're struggling with communication in your practice between doctor and office manager, anything like that, Tiff's your girl. Our company can definitely help you with that. So reach out, email us hello at the com. And Tiff, any last thoughts you've got? I think you crushed it today. And I just love remembering, listen and validate. And what are we really here for? We're here to have a great patient experience. Yeah, no, I love it. Thank you. I think this was fantastic. And I love that you gave me this topic because you know how much I love communication. (laughs) I did. (laughs) We do consultant podcasting. Gosh, I don't even know, Tiff. Is it once a month? Is that how it feels like it's more often? I think we try for every other week. <laughs> okay. That's I was like, it just shows up. And then I'm like, oh yeah, it's podcasting with a consultant day. And so I have <laughs> gotten better because Sissy's gotten better. We actually have like topics and conversations rather than just being tip what's on your mind. So I pushed out all of them to them yesterday. I just assigned topics to each consultant and said, come up with some great ideas. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And Tiff, I said, we have to do two today and this is your topic. And she's like, yay, I love communication. <laughs> so I think it was absolutely perfect. Tiff, you are such, I try hard to have the different consultants who have great skill sets in those areas do the podcast with me. And Tiff is truly masterful. Tiff, it didn't come easy for you. It didn't come natural. You've gone through so much training to be an incredible communicator. And so it's very fun for you to share those skills, share with people. So The things Tiff teaches you guys are things she's had to go through years and years and years of training, learning, education to become as great as she is. And I will say it's something I watch her ridiculously do well in every practice she consults is get them to be better communicators if they're willing to do it. She'll give you all the schools, all the tools, and Tiff is truly masterful. So Tiff, thanks thanks for doing that today. It was fun. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And thanks for all your kind words. I 
I just love sitting here and listening to them. My <laughs> chorus side is just like, heck yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're ever having a bad day, just go Google Tiffany in our podcast and you can hear all of Tiff's good, like my great words about Tiff, all of Tiff's great knowledge, like Tiff, there you go. It will be there forever because <laughs> we've podcasted these into the eternities. So <laughs> when we're 90 with our cotton candy hair, don't worry, mine will be pink, Tiff's will be blue. We will have jazzies <laughs> with Nas. This is what Tiff and I are living yep. for. These are our life goals. Uh, we'll just sit back and listen to the podcast of these times and remember the good old days of podcasting on communication. <laughs> yep, 100%. 100%. I love it. I love it. And to tie from our last podcast, your jazzy will have spiffy tiffy on it with your character. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, go listen to mine and Tiff's last podcast. It was a good time. Tiff, as always, thank you. And for all of you listening, thank you all. And I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you next time.